Do you hate ads? I hate ads. You know what I like? Patreon.com slash Inkdependence. It keeps this channel ad free. Hello, folks. Welcome to an unboxing uh, of this this nice jet pens haul. It looks like jet pens has their own USPS boxes. Wild. I didn't know you could even get them customized that way. So let's get in here. This is all stuff that I bought. So thank you very much, patrons, for your generous support. And if you are not a patron, but you uh, enjoy the stuff on the channel, then uh, consider being a patron. You get access to a couple of discount codes for uh, my shop online and also Gold Spot pens. And also you get to hang out in the Discord and, you know, that sort of thing. So... Go on over to patreon.com slash independence and, uh, you know, help support the channel if you're into that sort of thing. It helps me, helps me get stuff like this, which has just oh, a lot of stuff. Oh, oh it's stuck on the pla it's stuck on the glue. <laughs> That's why it's so hard to pull out. Here we go. It's a very effective glue. Bubble wrap, hooray, okay. All right, put those over here. Okay, we have our uh, we have our jet pens invoice slip here. List of things. Um, Let's open this up first. Oh, I know what these are. Good. Oh, there. It's too tight to save. Oh, it came with paper clips. How cute is that? Okay. So. This is the uh, paperclip version of these little things. I really like these. These are Harapiko animal clip holders. Fun stuff like there. This is the Shiba Inu. I have this here whale shark that I like a lot, but the whale shark actually gets real tippy if you put a if you put a like a fountain pen in it. This is it's okay, but the slightest jostling it just goes over. And this is a pretty light pen. Uh, I have this in here, and it just keeps falling over because it's too it's too heavy. So uh, some of my friends have the Shiba Inu ones, and so I was like, oh, I got to try those because they're very cute. Uh, and it comes with little paper clips. Oh, good, and it's got a magnet in there. It's like, give me paper clips. Delicious, love that. Uh, these little um, uh, stands are uh, eleven seventy five. Oh, twelve seventy five for the paper clip one. So. For 13 bucks, I can have this cute little Shiba on my desk offering me paper clips from its dog mouth. Very cute. All right, let's get into this one. <laughs> this is the pen holder version. It's like, put a, put a pen in its mouth. This one I have seen hold some very large pens, so I'm hoping this one will be a little bit better. It's got feet on the front of it, you see, right here, whereas my whale shark it just has a smooth shark belly, and so it tips over. This one feels sturdy. Let's put something big in there. Nope, that's too big. <laughs> put this in there. Yeah, better. Yeah, not bad. I think the tail helps too. How do you do with this shown? It's a heavy pen. Actually, this one tapers. Oh, it's interesting how these are different. It's interesting how these are different. The whale shark has a bigger mouth and it doesn't taper, whereas the Shiba totally does taper. Hmm. How are you doing with this? Yeah, pretty good. How you do it? How you do with this? I thought that was gonna be too much to ask, but it actually does just fine with a Kiridos, who is way too big, but fun. Okay, I like it. Oh wait, how about this? No, oh, that's too much power. Oh, it can just about hold up this Mont Blanc Jonathan Swift. <laughs> just about. All right, two little Shibas right there. Fun stuff. All right, now let's get in here. I like to save bubble wrap if I can because I reuse it when I ship things. It seems better than just, you know, tossing it. So if you order stuff from me, you might get reused bubble wrap or you might get biodegradable, recyclable stuff. You never know. <laughs> Here's one thing that I got in here. These are ink flips and the ink flips go for $9.50 at Jet Pens. There are Let's see, does it say how many little cards are in here? Hmm, it probably says on here, let's see. There are 50 cards here. I'm reading from the online description. Features uh, 50 cards made of white fountain pen friendly paper. Each card has room to create an ink swatch with space below to write the name of the ink. The ring can be opened so you can rearrange your cards or remove them to label your ink bottles or remove them to label, oh, that's fun. I don't think I would remove them to label my ink bottles just because 
honey bottles probably have names but uh, yeah this looks nice these are fun i like the uh, i like the way these look this paper does feel uncoated well might be a slight coating on there let's see if it actually says what the paper is on here it does not it just says fountain pen friendly so we'll try these out in another video because uh, i got a couple of these kinds of things i also got these ink cards right here which are the Cameterior ink cards. These were $7.75 for 100 cards and a blotting paper. So these were almost 10 bucks for 50. These are about half the price. Nicely, nicely packaged. Ink card fountain pen. That doesn't say. All right, let's get in here. Let's see how these feel. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna take the time to test these out today. We'll have another video where I do those. But uh, I do wanna see what they feel. Oh, this is a box. Okay, we can just take this off. Oh, there we go. Oh, they're glue bound at the top. That's fun. And there's the blotting paper. Cute. Fountain pen, blotting paper. How do these feel? They don't feel as thick as these, but they do feel nice. And I like the I like the style. It's a very it's a very simple kind of style. Picture of a fountain pen. You got a little place to make an ink blo an ink scribble, names and such. What's this for? Oh, this holds the blotting paper, doesn't it? That's handy. So it's got these little corner tabs you can put the blotting paper into if you are more dexterous than I. I guess presumably you could just leave that there and then just close it when you want to blot it. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, I like that. It's a nice presentation. Uh, good number of sheets, 55 by 99, 91 millimeters. It's a good size. All right, cool. Happy with that. There we go. Some ink swatching cards I usually use, and I don't think I'm gonna change, but it's nice to have options and to be able to show people different things like this. I usually use Colodex and coloring cards, but uh, these are fun new things. Here we have a couple of new stamp pads. Uh, I've been running a little bit low on my ink pads and I kind of want different colors and stuff. So I got these Stazon ones, spiced chai. Whoop. Spice chai and ganache. Okay, and these are $6.75 a piece, which is not too bad. It's a little bit on the expensive side, I think. These feature a, uh, let's see, it is a versatile mid-sized stamp pad featuring fast-drying solvent-based pigment ink. Works on a variety of surfaces, including plastic, metal, leather, and rubber. Ink does not react with watercolors or other water-based media, being it great for uh, use in mixed media projects, which is uh, exactly what I want to use it for. I have, I have lots of fun stamps that I've gotten from Well-Appointed Desk. Uh, well appointed desk makes such good stamps. Thanks, Anna, for for having these. But I love using the carrier of the messenger pigeon. I love that. You also got these ones that are shaped like ink vials and such, uh, which are and I've, you know, she makes nib ones, all kinds of neat ones. But when you try to use them for actually using them as um, uh, on swatch cards, the ink can kind of react with the stamp pad ink in weird ways. Like sometimes it like follows the stamp pad ink and tries to bleed through the paper. Sometimes they, you know, the colors mix, all, all that sort of thing, even after the stamp pad ink has been dry for some of the ones that I've tried. So I'm gonna try some of these and see how they work. I have here my oversized coloring card, oversized coloring. Let's try this. Um, let's try this ganache one. It's cute. Interesting. I like it so far. There's one. Let's try the other one. The different stamp. The other one, the ink. There's an ink bottle in here. Let's try this with the spiced chai. These lids are really interesting. They kind of just, they kind of hover like that, which is pretty cool. They are small, so you kind of have to move it around, make sure you get it on all the edges there. Also use these stays on uh, all-purpose stamp cleaners. So there's really good stuff. You just kind of like a little, little fabric thing there. You blot onto here and it'll help you clean this off and I have this little scrubby board thing that's made for cleaning stamps it gets into the gets into all the grooves and such like that and there you go so I just sort of dab this on here get a little bit of a rub and I get your stamps clean 
which is very handy. Uh, this is, uh, I don't know where I even find this. This is super old. My mom gave me this a long time ago. It was hers that she used and uh, pretty, pretty good. You can see all the, you know, it's turned yellow, <laughs> but you just wash this off in the sink after a while. It just gets dirty and you just, I just clean it with soap and water. So how do these look? Pretty good, I think. We got a little bit of bleed here and there, but those look like right there. I think I just, um, I went a little bit too hard on the stamp pad. I'm used to a drier stamp pad and these feel pretty wet. And so I think I went a little bit too hard on that, but uh, just a little bit of bleed through on here. So maybe go less hard than that. We'll see. We'll swatch some ink on that later and maybe see how it looks. Let's see what we have here. Oh, these. I kind of forgot all about these, but uh, these are real fun. So these are tack memos. These are little tiny sticky, sticky notes. Uh, here we go. <laughs> Look how little these things are. They're made by Kukuyo, which makes all kinds of good papers and such like that. These little sticky notes. A little over half, probably two thirds of it is sticky. So that's cool. That ought to give you plenty of stickum power. Uh, let's go ahead and write on these with something. Uh, let's try a fountain pen real quick. Looks pretty good. Let's try a ballpoint. Also good. No real bleed through from the fountain pen there, of course. And uh, no, no feathering or spread as far as I can tell. Looks, looks really good. So these are totally usable with, with uh, ballpoints and fountain pens. Nice, all right. And then this is uh, the same thing, but in even tinier sizes. And take these out. And you have all these, you know, they're like the little file folder thing. You just take them out one at a time, I think. Yeah, look at these are like half the size, about half the size. But that is a cute, a cute post-it note. How much of this is sticky? Again, about two thirds of it is sticky, which is, I think, pretty good. All right, looking forward to using those. These will make great uh, uh, page markers and all kinds of other stuff. You just need to write a little tiny note. When I am doing work, I tend to, uh, when I'm like, you know, notating a paper or a chapter or something like that, I like to use a ton of post it notes. And usually I'll use sort of the standard smallish. Uh, square ones and I like cut those in half or something because I almost never need a whole post-it note if I'm going to use that size I'll use something bigger. So these are actually really neat. How much do these little kukuyos go for? So the pack of five of these is four dollars and fifteen cents on jet pens and the two pack is three ten So not bad for these adorable little sticky notes and these are a hundred and a hundred sticky notes on each of these So that's that's a lot of sticky notes for a, just a little bitty cube. Also, if you're gonna throw it in like a you know, throw it in your bag or uh, you know pencil case or something that's pretty nice and small. It's good size, I think. And this is actually these are the large version of this product, which is hilarious to me because they are small. Okay, what else do we have in here? Uh, let's let's grab these. I think that's all of them. All right, so uh, I I really like these. I got these. Uh, I got one of these just because it was kind of fun. I I like the color of this one. This is turquoise blue, all one word. And these are by Lifework, which is a South Korean, uh, you know, stationery maker. They use these little stick refills. I don't know if you can buy the ink itself, but I mean, these pens themselves are two dollars a piece. And so I like it. I like this one so much. Actually, I was like, I need to, I need to get the rest of these. They have truly weird names for the colorways, which I think is great. Uh, so we have here. This is Vermilion. These are all 0.5 millimeter ballpoints. So vermilion, this is turquoise blue. Oh, is that written on all of them? Maybe it's on the other side. This is snow gray with gray and turquoise and like this kind of snowy uh, end cap. I also like how these aren't exactly white. So like that's white next to them. They're kind of a cream or they kind of look like they got left in the, you know, in the pin cup in the sun or something. They look, they look like they got a vintage look to them and, and I dig it. Uh, this one is called lilac. Then here we've got, um, do they have the name on them in the back somewhere? This is Prussian blue, which has got a, a brown uh, knock on here and then a nice blue body. This one is saffron pink, which is cool. This one is apple green, which is red and, red and white and then bright green. And this one should be, uh, yeah, this one's called mayonnaise. 
<laughs> which is green and blue. You don't want your mayonnaise to be green or blue. I guess you want it to be that color. Although what I want it to be is in the jar. Uh, I don't want mayonnaise. I don't like it. But I think that these are great. So I went ahead and just, I just got all them all. Uh, at two bucks a piece, this is like $14 worth of uh, little pens. These are going to look great in a pen cup. Uh, and they're, I really like using them. They're a bit finer than I usually go. It's a very pointy 0.5 millimeter, but it's, uh, it's a nice feel. I, I like it. All right, there we go. There's a bunch of those. Uh, and then these, which won't be super exciting to show, but nonetheless, these are really good. How did I get? Oh, this is, um, okay. So this is actually a Parker style refill. This is the Oto Flash Gel, which is a, uh, a really good gel refill if you want to use it in something that takes a Parker style refill. So if you've got, say, like one of these and you're like, ah, I don't really want the roller ball. I'd rather have gel. This is a 0.5 millimeter needle tip um, Parker style refill. And these are the best gel refill, I think, for these pens. The only problem is they only come in black, which is a little bit of a bummer, but I do like the flash dry and uh, and I like the I like the point. Even though it is a little bit needly, it kind of throws me off sometimes, but I like that. It'll also fit in things like this here tactile turn and lots of things that take a Parker style refill. And then these are D1 style refills, which are small things for multi-pens. I got this because I got this uh, Lamy 2000 multi-pen, which is a pretty good multi-pen. I like the body, the knock is pretty good, the action is serviceable, although not always perfect. Uh, but I really don't like the refills that Lamy sent with this. They're just, you know, these little Lamy D1s. And so I decided to get some good D1s to replace them so that I will like this pen more. And thus, I got a couple of these Uniball Jetstreams in blue and black. And then I got this Pilot one in red because uh, these are better than what the Lamy comes with. These are not very expensive. They're, I don't know, a dollar or two a piece, I want to say. Oh, three dollars. Three dollars for the the blue and the black, and the red was a dollar eighty. So as usual, Uniball jet streams coming at a premium, but uh, you know, not too bad to make this pen write a whole lot better than it currently does. So that's cool. It's like getting a whole new pen. Okay, small technical difficulty. My camera ran out of memory, so I lost a few minutes of stuff. We're going to recreate that now. So uh, I was talking about these. I got a pair of these Ninapai. Uh, I guess they're kind of like combo highlighter pens. Well, it says there, pen and marker. So that's what it is. And these are the colors. So it shows you it's got peach and orange and pink and, uh, and like a dark blue there. And I have this in gray, which is a gray highlighter and gray uh, pen in there. And I find it to be so convenient because when I am uh, when I'm doing work, I'm, I'm highlighting things and I'm writing things in margins and I'm writing sticky notes like these little ones and things like that. And doing that with one writing instrument is pretty great. And here's what you come up with. Uh, they are set up this way so that you have a highlighter down there and you highlight stuff and you flip it over and you can write there with the with this direct ink thing, which is real good. Right. So. Uh, it, it comes out really well. The, oh, oh no, oh, it's okay. I, I found, I, I caught it. I caught it. Uh, but you got orange on orange, which is a little bit hard to read here. Uh, it's okay, but generally I'm highlighting text and then writing beside it. This one is, I think, perfectly usable for highlighting and then writing over it or uh, vice versa with the pink and blue. It's a good color combo. And of course, orange and orange is always a winner with Mike. Okay. Um, these go for three bucks a piece, which I think is totally fine for a highlighter and pen. I am curious to see which of these runs out of ink first, the highlighter or the pen part. I don't know what's inside here. I don't think you can take these apart. So I don't know. Yeah, I don't think these come apart in any obvious way. I could probably pry this apart, but I don't really want to break it. Uh, I'm, I'm curious if they share an ink supply or if they're two different things. Like, who knows what's going on on the inside of this? All right. If you, like, sawed one in half, let me know what's on the inside. Anyway, check these out. Ninja pies. I really like these. All right. Uh, next up, I got one of these. And, you know, I'd love an inner gel. I have gotten to inner gels on this channel before. And uh, I also really like off blacks. And this is one of the limited edition uh, olive black on well, this is the black colors limited edition olive black ink so there are several of these there's black there's red green dark blue and purple although black on black is not like i mean black is a black color i guess but that's kind of the most boring version however this pin body is sleek look at that black on black on black 
Uh, I really like that. This is the same pen body as the usual inner gel click pens, but without the uh, the bright colors and that sort of thing. I do kind of wish there was something up here which indicated the color of the ink, because if you're looking at a fistful of pens, you want to know, oh yeah, I need to grab the orange one or whatever, and this is just black on black. But I only got one of them, so it's not going to be a problem. And this is uh, this is what it looks like. It is olive black in this 0.7 millimeter. I think that these are some really great gel pens, uh, some of my favorites. And it's an extremely dark green. Like, it's dark green, but... I mean, it's gonna look black most of the time, which is kind of what you want off of an off, uh, an off black. So pretty good, I like that. All right, uh, perfectly good buy, I think. These are 480, which is pretty expensive for a single pen, and it's why I only got one. I thought this looked the best out of the writing samples there on jet pen, so I went ahead and grabbed the, uh, the olive black. But 480 for one uh, gel pen, <sighs> limited edition seems like, they're really kind of, seems like they're kind of milking that limited edition thing, you know, but whatever. It's going to be a good pen and I'm going to like it, so not a problem. This is one that I got, I picked up and put in my cart right before I bought this stuff because it's just got such an interesting look to it. You have this sort of knobbly, very, like it's got a good grip to it. It's kind of it's not sticky, but it's kind of tacky, you know, like it attaches to your fingers. It feels pretty good. This is a Pentel. Uh, which I've really been liking Pentel pens recently. I mean, I've been using these uh, these Glidewrite pens a lot recently, so I'm, I'm curious to see what's uh, what this one is like. But it's got this interesting knock situation where the knock is also the clip. I think that's pretty that's pretty slick. Works nicely. It's good stuff. It's, it's got a very nice little click sound to it. It's not too not too loud. Uh, this is 0.7 millimeter. These all come in black and. Um, these are, oh, it's, uh, this is called the Calm, and I think the, the, the soft click is part of it. Reading from the copy on the website, the Pentel Calm is designed to make writing as comfortable and distraction-free as possible. It features a quiet, gentle click mechanism that is easy on your hands and respectful of those around you. Its long, leather-like grip, uh, grip section is grippy and comfortable to hold, as, it's, as is its low-viscosity Vicuña inks provides a delightfully smooth and vibrant writing experience. Now, this comes in a few colors, uh, blue... Uh, red, green, black, and oh, white. Oh, these are just, those are the body colors. Blue, red, and black are the only colors the, the, the ink comes in, and they only had black available. So I could either get this in a black body or a green body with black ink. Those are my choices right now. And these go for 265 which is a perfectly good price. Let's go ahead and take this, uh, take this little, little nub off of there, right there. Set aside. Uh, actually, let's see what's inside it before we write with it. Oh, interesting. That's another interesting refill. Um, usually, let's see, is there a spring up here in the front? Yeah, there's a spring in the front. Okay, so a little bit different from the from the um, the glide rights, which have this weird just stick pen style thing. It's kind of hoping they'd be interchangeable, but I don't know what's interchangeable with this. Nothing that I've I know of. All right, so let's see how the calm writes. Got a few little skips, but the first uh, first times when you are uh, sort of breaking in a ball point, you can get that kind of thing before the ball really gets uh, gets rolling full bore. Oh, that rattly sound you hear is up here in the it's up here in the clip. It sounds like. Hmm. Weird. It actually, <laughs> I only hear it when I'm holding something up and writing with it. When you're writing with it down, like, you know, point down as you should, it doesn't make that weird sound. So I don't know what that is. But uh, yeah, I think this is an interesting pen and it does feel good. This is this is a nice feel. All right. So ballpoint pen, 265, not too shabby. Oh, I never wrote with this. I'll go ahead and write with one of these, which is a very fine ballpoint. And I have to think about it when I'm writing with it because I'm not used to very fine ballpoints. Also, this paper is a little bit textured, as you can see. It's not really what you want necessarily for ballpoints, and so maybe that's going to have going to contribute to some of the the skippiness. Skippiness I saw here, and um, sort of like you can see here on the O, I was writing across a like a little like a fiber or something, and so it like shifted. So you know, consider your paper even when writing with ballpoints. All right, the next two things are paper. This is labeled on jet pens as Jet Pens Cosmo Air Snow 75 GSM loose leaf paper A5 blank 100 sheets. Uh, and this goes for 11 bucks, so not the cheapest thing in the world, but uh, 100 sheets is a fair number of sheets. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what this paper is like. I'm not sure what makes it Jet Pens Cosmo Air Snow. 
but uh, let's see. Okay. Gonna pull that out of the middle, and also it comes with a blotting page back here in the back, which is a nice little inclusion. So this paper is very nicely white. I like the color quite a lot. It's good. It feels nice. It does have a like you can you can feel it a little like it it feels got a little little bit of texture like you get with the Cosmo Airlight. Let me grab a fountain. Well, let's, let's try a ballpoint real quick. This is the gel pen. Feels really good. These all feel really good on this paper, and none of them had any problems with skipping or anything like that. Uh, yeah, it's got a nice feel. Let's try some. Uh, let's try some fountain pens on here. This is a medium nib with my Cheerio Water Bus. And it does warn that it'll take a little while for fountain pens to dry on here, just because uh, the paper is um, the the way it is. This is Monarca. Uh, something Blanca. I'm forgetting the first part of this. It's like white sand or something like that. Both of those feel good. This one felt a bit better. This one was, uh, this ink is maybe a little bit on the drier side and it felt just a little bit draggy. You can see it's still, still both of them are still drying there, but uh, they felt good. This felt great. Sometimes I found Cosmo Airlight paper to, um, like it's got a lot of drag to it. It's kind of thick and it's got a little bit of a texture and so it feels a little weird. No, this feels nice. It's another medium nib. Let me grab an extra fine and see how that goes. That's actually kind of interesting. It seems to, yeah, I'm getting a little bit of sheen here, but here I don't really get any sheen. All right, one more, just because I'm curious. So I'm curious how it does sheen. This is Kiwi Cuts a Coatl. Yeah, you're getting a lot of sheen on this one. So even as it's drying, you're still getting it. So yeah, interesting. It ate a little bit of the sheen from this Aurora Australis, which is usually more sheen than it is purple. But uh, Kiwi Cuts a Coatl is like, nope, I'm going to sheen. I don't care what else you're trying to do. But um, this all looks really good. It's uh, got some show through, but no bleed at all anywhere. And the paper feels nice. So uh, yeah, I can see myself using this. This is, this is pretty nice. All right, cool, 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 cool. Another Cosmo, Cosmo Air Snow, not Cosmo Air Light, so neat. All right, and the last thing is this, which I picked up because I like Kikuyo stuff. This is the Campus, which is a very nice, uh, like sort of school kind of notepad. They're not very expensive, as I remember. Yeah, this is $2.60 for this little notebook. This is 30 pages of pH neutral archival paper. These are 70% recycled wood pulp which is interesting. I hear that these are good for fountain pens and it's nice and smooth, which sometimes you don't get with recycled paper. It's fairly white, although it does have a little, it's a little bit off white compared to, compared to that. You can see that it's a different color, right? But just holding it up by its own, seems like it's pretty, pretty white. And I hear that it's good for fountain pens. Recycled paper is seldom fountain pen friendly. So I decided this would be a fun thing to try out. Let's give this a shot real quick. All right, so as you can see, this is a, uh, a fairly, like a medium wet ink, this Cheerio Water Bus, in a pretty wet nib, and uh, no problems at all. No, uh, yeah, no feathering, no spreading, no bleed through. Uh, you see a little bit of, uh, you can see it's buckling just a little bit is what I call that. I'm not sure if that's a industry standard term or not, but you can see maybe, yeah, it's hard to get it to focus, but it kind of like wrinkled up right around the words, but uh, it's flattening out nicely. Yeah, pretty cool. Let's try this with an even bigger pen. As Tasha Savvy Midori in a, uh, a big old Concord, uh, Concord nib from uh, from Sailor, which is a great pen and nib here. And uh, yeah, the ink is changing colors quite nicely. You get a little bit of a sheen on there. Do we get any bleed through? No, not at all. You see it's, um, it's, you can see it on this side actually a little better. It's buckled just a little bit, but that will flatten out once you close the book and like, you know, let it stay closed. It'll flatten back out. But it does that sometimes you put a lot of ink on a thin-ish paper. So yeah, pretty nice. Pretty, pretty nice. And for $2.60, I think this is a solid buy, even though it's only 30 pages, but sometimes you don't want a zillion pages. It can be daunting to fill them all. Uh, this might be the, the perfect size for a lot of applications. Make sure that's dried before I close it. It is. Okay, cool. There we go. All right. Um, oh, I was going to smear some ink on this. Mm, do I have any ink candy? All right. This is Birmingham Pim Company Honey Creeper, which I have recently put in a couple of uh, a couple of pens. I'm just going to smear it across because I just want to see how it interacts with uh, the actual ink. I'm not trying to be fancy. 
And it looks like, it looks like no interaction is what it's having. Yeah, that looks like it's working perfectly. How's it doing on the back? Yeah, just fine. I think these are, uh, I think these are winners. Uh, I like these, uh, I like these a lot. Good job, uh, stays on. These are acting as they should, which is, uh, you know, not doing anything weird when you put ink on top of them. Very good, very good, perfect. Now I'm gonna have fancier ink swatch cards in the future. Okay, so thanks for hanging in there. Uh, if you have, I mean, if you have, you're, you're here now. Uh, thanks for hanging in there on this very long haul video with a bit of a mechanical interruption in the middle. But uh, look, I, I, I bought a bunch of stuff. So thank you very much to patrons who make it possible for me to grab stuff like this. A lot of these are going to be seeing uh, individual reviews in the future. Um, so be on the lookout if you're like, oh, I wonder how that works. Be on the lookout. I'll have it in the future after I've given them some use. And uh, don't forget to feed your Shibu, Shibu Inu. Uh, don't feed them staples. Feed them kibbles or um, pizza or whatever. All right. I'll see you all later. Uh, peace out.